Hey everybody, Jim McLaren here, and we're going to be starting a new video series based on how to program your keyboard rig. And I'm going to be using Apple Mainstage for this. Uh, I've been using Apple Mainstage for the past decade or so, something like that. And since I started using Mainstage, I haven't really felt the need to go back to a multi-keyboard setup, you know, where you'd have a piano and maybe a, another keyboard and then maybe a mono synth or an organ. Everything can be done within Mainstage. It's extremely versatile and quite easy, actually, to make work. It also is very powerful if you really want to dig into the program you can get a lot of very cool things to happen. Uh, with that in mind I'm using an M Audio Oxygen 61 Mark IV controller today. You can use any kind of controller you want. Uh, the more drum pads, faders, buttons, knobs that it has, the more you can enjoy a hands-free experience so you don't really have to be controlling your laptop very much. So with that in mind, uh, today's video is going to be all about setting up your initial main stage concert. Okay so here we go. I've got my M Audio MIDI controller at the bottom, and I've got my MacBook Pro sitting up here, and I'm screen recording the MacBook so that you can see exactly what I'm doing. So I'm going to start by loading a preset just to start off here. Um, the Quick Start keyboard loads way too many sounds, so I'm just going to go to this keyboard minimalist in the keyboards category, load it up, and once it loads up, it says hardware controls are not yet assigned because we haven't really customized this. So right now I'm just that's great Rhodes electric piano um, but I want to customize this so I'm going to go into my layout menu and select everything command A and then delete it now I'm going to say two things the first thing is that this this part of the program is sometimes a little bit glitchy I've had it where I drag a controller onto the screen and other controllers just disappear. I don't know. I guess it's a bug. Um, a little glitchy. The other thing is that if you don't know how to use main stage, these videos might be a good place to go to after you've looked at a basic tutorial. Um, follow what I'm doing, but um, I'm not really going to stop and explain every single function as we go. Uh, the videos just be way too long that way. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to make an exact copy in main stage of what I have in the physical world, which is this keyboard. So let's select all controls. I'm going to grab a 61 key keyboard. Boom. There's a 61 key keyboard. Along with that, I'll put the pedals on. Okay. And uh, try to line them up so that they line up with the keyboard there. That's, yeah, that's good enough. That's good enough. Now, uh, I want to try to duplicate all these pads and knobs and everything. So I'm going to start with the pads. This is a row of four and a row of four, eight of them. Uh, there happens to be a set of eight drum pads in this arrangement. So I've loaded them up here. I'm going to just make them a bit smaller, drag them over to the side. It doesn't have to be exactly like my keyboard, but I do generally want the controls in the same place. Um, the next thing I need is I need some of these knobs. Now these are the knobs that sort of start and stop. They don't have a, they don't continuously go. So uh, I'm going to actually need these things called directional knobs. I don't want eight of them though, because eight arranged horizontally, uh, as it says here, it's not what I'm looking for. This is four and then four underneath slightly offset. So I'm just going to add one, uh, one directional knob. All right, there's one. Now I'm going to make it smaller so that it sort of fits with the scale of the rest of my controllers. Put it generally where I need it to be, maybe as small as I want it to be. That's that's probably good. Now, copy and paste. Command C, Command V. There's my paste. Now, the cool thing about this program when you're arranging these is that it draws little blue boxes around them to just indicate that you're on the correct. In this case, uh, you know, I'm exactly lined up vertically with the other controller, or if I went this way, it would also give me a blue line and a little bit of a lock, like it kind of locks there to know that you're lined up with that controller. So I'm going to line myself up with this controller here. I'm going to take both of these, copy, paste, and try to do the same thing. Now, unfortunately, I just got to eyeball how wide this is. Let's just say there we go. So I've got four of them now. I'm going to copy these four. I'm going to paste these four, and I'm going to just, yeah, just offset them slightly so that they look like they look like they do on my keyboard. That looks pretty good. Now, it looks like I need four buttons. 
eh, not directly underneath, but somewhere underneath those. So I'm going to add just a button. Uh, these are square buttons. I don't really care. I'll just add a button. So again, I'm going to make this button smaller so that it sort of fits the scale. Uh, yeah. I'm going to move everything up a little bit. Give myself some room. Okay, so let's put this up. Okay, we copy, we paste, we move it over a bit. I'm going to take, there we go, take two of these, copy them, paste them. They're already lined up. And I'm roughly in the right area there. Okay, probably might choose to move these over just a little bit. Yeah, something like that. Okay, now the next set of controllers, I'm going to add these nine faders. And thankfully, they actually have a preset of eight vertical faders or nine vertical faders. And nine faders represents the draw bars that an organ would be using. So I'm going to add these nine faders up here. And once again, let's make them a bit smaller. Let's move them into place. Now, I actually have another file saved with all of these things that I've done. So I'm just going to sort of roughly place these and then I'll load up my finished samples. All right, eight buttons. Oh, that wasn't right. I don't want eight buttons. I want nine buttons. These nine buttons are going to go underneath the fader. So I'm going to add nine buttons. And in this case, I'm going to make them smaller. Now, here's something cool. I can line up the left side with the faders above. And then I should be able to make the size smaller. And have it line up with the other side. There you go. Now I know that these are exactly matched in terms of their width. And at this stage, I have, whoops. At this stage, I have all these controllers. I can line these up so that they're lined up with other controllers that are there. I could now take this, line it up vertically. And now, Everything's everything's roughly in the right spot. Now, I'm going to load up the patch that I have saved of all the other little things that I've added in here, little widgets. So I'm going to close this. I'm going to open up my file. I think it's called main2. And I'll show you all the things that I've put into this. So in addition to my keyboard, my expression pedal, sustain pedal, pitch, modulation, pads, knobs, buttons, buttons, faders, I've added. Uh, this is just a VU meter. I intend this to be my CPU. I've added another VU for master output. I have added a short patch list and I've added a parameter box up here. I've also added a parameter box down here. Now these are going to be what patch I'm on and the time. Let me show you how to do this. So I'm going to go into the edit menu. So once again, you have layout where you design your program. You have edit where you probably are going to spend most of your time where you add sounds, tweak sounds, do whatever. And then finally perform where you could have a full screen version of this so that you can just watch what you're doing. First thing I see is that when you play your keyboard, it's got the layer, like which layer is going on right here. And it's kind of in the way of this thing here. So let's just go back. I'm going to click on this piano. Now it says display keyboard layers. You can have it go seven layers tall. In this case, I don't want any to be displayed. But now when I go back to performance, yeah, it's gone. Good. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start assigning some of these things. So I'm going to, not at the patch level, I'm going to do this at the main concert level. Because then this, if I, if I change these parameters while I'm on the main concert level, then it will affect the rest of the patch that I do, which is great. So I'm going to click on this VU meter. I want this to be the CPU uh, usage. So actions, this is where you're going to find all the great stuff. CPU load. All right. So CPU load is now 1%. Good. Now I'm going to look at output and most specifically, not this fader. Yeah, yeah this fader, this fader. I'm going to map this to the master 
volume. So now, if I change the master volume, you'll see that change as well, which is kind of cool. It's kind of cool. Let's just return that to zero. And then I'm going to take the meter part of this output and select um, the output itself and the level. Okay. Uh, the master doesn't have this. It's only got volume up, volume down. But my main output, if I choose the level, then when I start playing, it pops up there. So that's good. The CPU load is good there. Um, I'm also going to make sure that this main text box here is showing me the current patch. So when I select Classic Electric Piano, it shows Classic Electric Piano, Okay, which is great. I've also got a patch list here. This is kind of cool. So right now it's just showing Classic Electric Piano, Untitled Patch, Untitled Patch. And now as I kind of climb up, I can do that. Now basically this is ready to go. This is exactly a copy of my keyboard rig. I haven't assigned any of those things, but that's going to be in the next video. I'm going to sign off, but I'll see you in the next video where we start assigning these controllers to specific functions. Thanks for watching everybody.